Good morning, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. So there's a couple of articles that I want to share with you guys. Actually, there's probably four, five. Anyway, the first two articles are talking about the housing market. One of them um, talking about the... They're both out of CNBC, but one of them's talking about the New Zealand housing market. The other one's talking about the housing market here in the United States. But when you read them, they're both very similar in nature in that there was like a perfect storm of stimulus packages in conjunction with low interest rates that caused the housing prices to just go through the roof and that we may be reaching a tipping point here as the um, as the interest rates begin to rise now you need to follow the u.s 10-year treasury where that 10-year treasury go all interest rates go and the reason is is that if you think about it a bank can either lend money to the u.s government that for 10 years at a 1.6% interest, or they can lend it to you and me right, at a higher interest rate, or they can take on more risk by lending it out you know, f- further. But the U.S. 10-year treasury is like the safest place to possibly go. So wherever it goes, all interest rates will go. Now, something that I found interesting is, is that we're starting to see these interest rates rise. And a lot of people said that there is no way that the Federal Reserve was going to allow interest rates to rise, but yet here they are and they're rising. And if you read articles like from, well, that are uh, interviewing like Jeffrey Gunlock, he's like this bond king. This guy knows a lot about, you know, the markets. He is saying that there is going to be a correction and that to say anything that the market is not overvalued is like not realistic. He is saying that the market is overvalued, all of it. The real estate, how, I don't know about his him saying the real estate, but he was talking about the stock market, at least in the um, article that I'm going to leave in the description for you guys but if you think about it if the stock market is overvalued the bond market's overvalued the real estate market is overvalued that's the entire market everything is like based around those three items bonds stocks and real estate so if those things start to come down that's the entire economy coming down and the only thing that's really holding this thing up was the low interest rates people were able to borrow at incredibly low interest rates and buy houses, cars, go on vacation, you know, do whatever it is that they were going to do with the economy. At the same time, they were getting the stimulus packages coming in. So it was like everybody thought everything was fine. Everything is just hunky dory, right? But now we're seeing the 10 year treasury rise. And this is creating an issue. Because not only are people coming out of forbearance, they need to refinance their homes. They're needing to refinance them into higher interest rates. The mortgages are going up as far as the interest rates on them go. And if this continues, the longer it goes, the higher the interest rates go, the more difficult it is for people to refinance their home into a lower interest rate. So these people who have been in forbearance, now granted, The forbearance number is coming down, and that's probably one of the reasons that they extended it farther, is to try and get even more forbearances off the books before it expires so that they do not have to refinance into a higher interest rate by force. You see, like if they they do it by choice, then at least you can plan for it. But if you come to the end of it and it says, okay, the forbearance time is over, but the interest rates are higher than before, and you need to refinance your loan, or you need to come up with all this money to pay off your forbearance, all the missed payments or whatever it was, in order to keep your loans going. You see the problem here? Like most people probably will not be able to make up all the back payments in one shot. I I just assume that, right? But most likely the people who have asked for forbearance for the entire time will not be able to do that. So they are going to be forced to refinance the entire loan into a new loan or take out a loan for for the missed payments. Either way, they are going to have to start making these payments and they're most likely going to end up being higher. Is just what I'm assuming, unless they went into forbearance when they had, you know, an interest rate that was higher than it was before the forbearance thing started. You see where I'm kind of getting at, guys? All these people who have been waiting this long may be waiting too long and end up locking themselves into higher interest rates because the U.S. 10-year Treasury continues to rise. Now, the argument that there is no way that the Federal Reserve is going to allow interest rates to rise, that the United States government couldn't afford it, or that you know it would just start unwinding the entire economy. They may not have a choice. Okay. Now, yes, they could fire up the printing presses and cap 10-year treasuries, or whatever treasuries they want. They could print up as much money as they want 
and buy all those treasuries, do you think they're only going to do that and destroy themselves? See, the Federal Reserve isn't about action. They're more about trying to get people to act on their words, on their actions. Like, we are going to do this, and it forces the market to go out there and behave in certain ways. That's more about what the Federal Reserve is into. Not a, Actually, they don't want to destroy the system. They don't want to do that. I mean, why would they? Does that make sense? I mean, sure, yeah, you can, like, you know, reestablish and reset and do all kinds of this control issues, but they got control now. They got control of all kinds of stuff right now. Why would they want to relinquish that? It doesn't make any sense. To me, they would want to hold on to this control. And so I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. Now, if you go and you look at the world, because this is really where the Federal Reserve is starting to pay attention to, because it's not just us here in the United States. The Federal Reserve has the entire world to look at, because the Federal Reserve is in charge of the world reserve currency. It's not the United States government that's in charge of the world reserve currency. It's the Federal Reserve. And it's the, the demand for their liabilities, their dollars out there. And now this is what I find very interesting, is that the United States sells a lot of U.S. treasuries to foreign investment. Now, a lot of this foreign investment uses those U.S. treasuries to do trade around the world. See, that's where the reserve currency comes in. People want to do, like two foreign nations want to do trade with each other. They do it in U.S. dollars for the most part, even if the United States isn't even involved. Right? That's where the world reserve currency comes in. The reason is, is that everybody accepts U.S. dollars. But China is growing. Their economy is getting huge. And they're going to pass up the United States at some point. And this is what I find interesting is that foreign investment inside of the Chinese government debt is coming very close to matching the United States. Think about that. The United States is missing out on a lot of, uh, on a lot of foreign investment that is making its way into China. And the reason is China has higher interest rates. They have a higher yield on their bond. And it feels safe to these investors. So China is becoming a safe haven asset and they have a higher interest rate. It's, it's attractive. So what's the Federal Reserve to do? But to match that. You see? So the U.S. Treasuries are going to rise. They are going to rise to meet China. To keep China from attracting all that foreign investment. Because truly... That's what the Federal Reserve really wants, is for all the world to want U.S. Treasuries. And they don't have that right now. China does. There's a lot to think about. Okay, so I'm going to leave links to all that stuff down in the description. I have a mail call for you guys, so I'm going to you know check this out. This is from uh, Mr. Hobbs. Cool, Mr. Hobbs here locally in Oregon. Right on. Thank you very much, Mr. Hobbs. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. Hey, right on. Very cool. 1986, Ellis Island. Man, that is clean, clean. Very nice. An ounce of silver, guys. Thank you very much, Mr. Hobbs. I really appreciate that. That is so beautiful. Man, I love these pieces. It's just like, I love adding to my collection. You know, the stuff that the uh, that the viewers send me, I set that all aside and uh, that's really awesome. Oh, hey, cool, check this out. Eisenhower, 1971. Uncirculated 40% Eisenhower dollar. Very, very cool, bro. These coins are produced in the same manner as coins made for general circulation. The only difference being is they contain 40% silver, whereas those made for regular use will be a cupro nickel. Is that what they called it? Cupro? I didn't, I didn't know that. The uncirculated coins, unlike the individually produced proof coins, are minted on high-speed presses. 
moved along conveyors and run through counting machines. No attempt is made to impact or a special finish such as appearance on the hand pressed proof. The treasury cannot guarantee the uncirculated coins will be free from blemishes. That is awesome. You know, I have seen these things and heard about them for a long time and I have searched the tills and searched for many years looking for one of these dollars. And there it is. Finally, I see one. Thank you, man. That is very cool. And I like this little token here, too, that shows, like, you know, kind of like an authenticity. That is awesome. So awesome for the collection. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Hobbs. And thank you, um, and thank you, everybody. Um, you know, I got a few more tips on the, um, on the PayPal and, you know, I, w I really wish I had time to email everybody back. I have such a hard time managing my time right now that I just like, I am slacking off on all kinds of stuff. So I do appreciate it. If you didn't get a response back from me, thank you. Thank you so much for everything you, you guys do for me. I, I don't know what else to say. All right. Uneducated economist. You guys let me know.